Hello, in this presentation, we will be working a problem in Excel. You should have access to this Excel worksheet. I highly recommend working through problems in Excel. One, because it's the closest thing we have towards going just paper and pencil. However, Excel will do some of the basic math. So instead of having to plug those information in terms of adding and subtracting into a calculator, we can start using Excel in order to do that. And therefore, Excel is better than paper and pencil and it's still close enough to paper and pencil that we can see the actual calculations and see what's going on unlike what can be done oftentimes within a database program where we don't have as much visualization in terms of what is happening. So the paper and pencil is great because you can see you have to actually work through things and do the calculations and see what's going on not so great because you have to erase things and recalculate things and punch things into a calculator which can take a lot of time databases are great in that they will make calculations very quickly but the problem with databases is that they often don't show all the processes involved and you can't see the calculations as readily as you can in excel excel is really that area where you can see both the calculations and have the help needed in terms of speeding up the process of the calculations. The other way reason to use the Excel sheets is that Excel is going to be really useful no matter where you are, even if you're not in the accounting department. So learning these basic skills within Excel is something that you may as well be doing in accounting because that's the perfect place to do that. And therefore, we're going to learn some basic uh, adding and subtracting and some formulas and just some cell references as we go through the accounting problems here. We're gonna have the problem work down here. These will be the transactions we will be working through and we're gonna be recording these transactions in accordance with the accounting equation, that being assets equal liability plus owner's equity. Remember, if you're in a class that has uh, starting with stockholders or a corporation, this equity section would be stockholders equity. If it's a partnership, it would be partnerships equity. If it's a sole proprietor, it would be owner's equity as it is here, however, the concept of the equity section as a whole is the same, so keep that in mind. We're going to have to then start memorizing the accounts that fall into these categories. Those accounts will be, uh, in terms of assets, we have cash, accounts receivable, supplies. Obviously, there could be more assets than this. We're going to concentrate on these assets first. In the future, you're going to just start to memorize what types of accounts are asset accounts, what types of accounts are liabilities, what types of accounts are in the equity section. And many times you'll just have an idea of it by the type of account that we're working with. Liabilities, we're going to be working with accounts payable and unearned revenue. And the owner capital or the equity section, usually the most complicated section as we go through this because it has both the capital account, which we traditionally think of in the equity section, as well as the entire income statement, meaning the entire income statement accounts of revenue and expenses. What we're gonna do is we're gonna record these transactions here, each line recording A, B, C, D, and then we're gonna sum up the subtotal of these transactions, and in so doing, we'll see that we will be in balance. And when we record the transaction, hopefully, we'll make sure that that is the case. And then we will, we will then put the balance down here and add up all the balances after each transaction, so we can see not only that the transaction is in balance, but that uh, our ending numbers will be in balance after the transaction has been made as well so let's see this first account we have a says owner a deposits cash into the business checking account so we're going to say that we are the business that's going to be the first thing we want to understand here is that uh, we're thinking in terms of the business the business being separate from the owner having a separate checking account first questions i'm always going to ask going through these one is cash affected in this transactions they will always be affected because we're actually working with the cash transactions here because i want to get familiar with these first i would like us to get familiar with transactions that have cash because it really helps us to understand the rest of the transaction once we fully understand the cash transactions we can move to some other transactions that don't always have cash we're going to move to accounts receivable and accounts payable cycles. Even as we move to those cycles, however, many of the transactions will have cash and I recommend working the cash side of any transaction first. So first thing is question, is cash affected? 
and I'm gonna say yeah cash is affected because we received cash and it's for 200,000 from the owner so I'm gonna type in 200,000 here from the owner at 20,000 200,000 note that as we put the information in here we can name the cell this is B3 and I'm not gonna put any commas in it or format it in any way and then when I hit enter or tab Excel will do the formatting for us as it has been instructed to do whatever the formatting selection is in this case it's a it's a number format here and it'll put the comma uh, in there for us then we just need to see the other side of the transaction so the next question is what other account is being affected the owner put the money in so the owner put this 200,000 in if we think about our accounting equation assets equal liabilities plus equity then it's probably the owner's equity section and within the owner's equity section we got capital revenue and expenses and it will then be capital then the question is is capital going up or down and note that we may not know that just by the capital count but we know that the cash went up and it's on this side of the equal sign and therefore this side of the equal sign must be going up as well in order to remain in balance so i know that this has to be an increase of two hundred thousand therefore now the rest of these accounts, there's not going to be any other thing happening for these accounts. Depending on the type of database system, if you're working a problem like this, they may require you to actually enter a zero into these items. I'm going to practice doing that just to practice within Excel and get used to Excel uh, and put the zeros in all the other accounts that aren't affected here. So I'm going to put zero in cell D3. This is cell D3 and I'm going to select tab and that'll actually go to the next cell. And then I'm going to select tab again. You don't have to select tab. You could just click in this item here. But if you start using tab as we go forward, it will be a lot faster. So that's really what I would like to practice if just to practice within Excel and supplies zero tab tab. So again, you could just click over here. We're in cell H3 zero tab tab. We're in cell J3 zero tab tab. Already something there. I'm not going to change it. Tab tab. We're in cell N3, zero, tab, tab. We're in cell P3, zero, tab, tab. And we are in cell R3, zero, and enter. That'll bring us back down to the bottom. Now I'm gonna scroll over to the right a little bit and this will give us some verification numbers, that being that total assets are equivalent to total liabilities. Net income is not affected. Net income being calculated as revenue minus expenses. So when we see something happen to these accounts, then net income, something will happen to net income and we'll take a look at that as we go. Note that within Excel, you can check this as well by just highlighting the numbers here and it'll say in the sum, you can probably see it down here, but in the sum function, it'll sum it up for you when you highlight, which is very nice to have. I'm gonna highlight the other side of the equal sign and then if I scroll down, there's 200,000 on each side of the equal sign. Therefore, we are in balance. Now I'm just going to bring the balance down. So I'm going to put the balance down here. This is the only transaction we have. So we're not adding anything up, but I want to keep the balance uh, column or the balance row just so just to keep in conformity as the rest of the problem goes. Next time, we're going to have to take this as the beginning balance plus B will give us the ending balance here. It's our first transaction and then I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take that same number and put it down here now we could do that by just typing in 200,000 again but I want to start using these basic formulas and the basic formulas I'm gonna put in B4 I'm gonna say equals and then point to that cell above it I'm gonna well I'll hit the up arrow okay I'm gonna hit enter I'm gonna hit equals and then the up arrow so equals and then the up arrow note that if something gets messed up and you don't you can't get off the cell notice if I click somewhere else when I have this equal sign then it's just gonna keep changing the cell and if that, if that happens what needs to happen is we want to start over again so you're just gonna delete whatever's in the cell you can delete it here or you can delete it here and then start over so I'm gonna select equals and then I'm gonna select the up arrow to point to cell B3 you can also just type in uh, equals B3 but uh, using the keyboard will be much faster and then I'm going to select enter and then I'm going to do that over here. This is the other account that was affected. So I'm going to say in L4 equals and the up arrow one time. So that equals L3. So what that means is I'm just going to take whatever's in L3 
and we're going to put that in L4. So the cell XL obviously sees this L3 as cell L3, and it's going to take whatever's in there, the 200,000, and put it there. Now I'm going to bring the rest of them down as well, just to just to keep practicing with this, and just to, this is good practice just in terms of learning the keyboard. So again, I would say equals up one tab tab and we're just bringing down the zero so you could type in the zeros you could leave it blank but it's good practice just to go through here just to learn the excel we're going to say equals up one tab tab equals up one tab tab equals up one tab 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 over to the revenue equals up one tab tab equals up one tab tab equals arrow up one and enter so now we've just brought these balance down they're exactly the same numbers because it's the only transaction we have at this point in time we're still in balance over here meaning total assets equal total liabilities plus equity no impact on net income we're then going to go to the next transaction in b and just note when we go to this transaction we're starting with this number and we're pretty much ignoring column a now we're not dealing with that anymore we're just dealing with b as the beginning numbers or the balance as the beginning numbers then b transaction and then we'll have the next balance after the b transaction so the next one says receive cash for uh cash from client for work done twenty thousand all right so then our first question will always be is cash affected and in this case it is all of these will have cash affected so we're going to say cash is affected cash is going up Therefore, uh, we're going to increase cash. So I'm going to put cash. I'm in cell B5, 20,000. I'm not putting any commas or anything in there because Excel will format that for us. Notice I'm in the cell right now. If I put, if I do an arrow or something like that, I'll be off the cell. Uh, but it, it, when I'm in the cell, it's not formatted. If I want to get off the cell, I have to select enter or tab and that'll, that'll then format the cell. Now we're no longer on the cell and and just keep in mind when that happens so if you if you're in the cell and you're trying to move around then you gotta hit enter and you'll be able to move around all right so the other side of this transaction receive cash from client for work done so now we just got to see which is the other account affected here now we did work it says we did work and therefore if we did work we earned revenue so revenue is not the same thing as cash we got cash at the same point in time but we actually earned revenue. So revenue is, is in the owner's equity section. It's an income statement account. The entire income statement is part of equity. So here's revenue. Now we know that 20,000 went up over here on the cash side and therefore this is on the other side of the equal sign. So revenue must be going up in order for our accounting equation to remain in balance. It's also good to double check this number as well and say, well, does it, if I didn't know this side was going up, does it make sense that revenue would be going up? And we can think of revenue, revenue really only goes up. It never really goes down, meaning uh, the customers only pay us. We do not typically pay the customers. And therefore revenue is pretty much always gonna go in one direction. It's gonna go up and it's always gonna be increasing equity. Uh, by the way, we could have done that for the 200,000 here. We knew 200,000 was going up in A because cash went up but if we if we take a look at that we know that the capital account represents what is owed to the owner and if the owner put in 200,000 that means that the capital account should be increasing by 200,000 as well so the revenue account is going to go up it always goes up so it must be going up so it's going to go up 20,000 I'm going to go ahead and put in the zeros now for all the other accounts no other accounts is affected of course but we're gonna practice the putting zeros in there, just practice Excel. So I'm in cell D5, zero, tab, tab, uh, F5, zero, tab, tab, H5 is the cell we're in, zero, tab, tab, J5, cell we're in, zero, tab, tab, L5, cell we're in, zero, tab, tab, then I'm gonna tab, tab to P5, zero, tab, tab, and finally R5, zero, and enter. Now we can check if we are in balance for this transaction. This transaction has an equal number of assets and liabilities. So we are in balance and there is an effect on net income. Why? Because the income statement accounts, revenue and expenses are affected here. Revenue went up, therefore net income goes up. Next transaction. Oh, now we're going to bring down the balances. 
So remember, here's our beginning balance. We're not doing anything with A now because A just brought down the balance. Now we have this balance of 200,000 and we just added another 20. So we have 220,000. We need to bring that balance here. Now I'm gonna do this with a formula. We're gonna start working these, these formulas. What I wanna do is say, I wanna say this cell plus this cell. So I'm not gonna say 200,000 plus 20. I'm gonna say what this, whatever's in this cell, which is B, this cell is B4 plus whatever's in this cell, which is B5. So I could just type equals B4 plus B5, but it's easier to, to use the arrows. I'm gonna use the up arrow, up arrow two times, B4 plus B5 and enter. So I'm gonna do that again. This time I'm gonna use the, the mouse. So I could say enter and point to the 200,000, that 200,000 <laughs> plus that 20,000 we're pointing to it just point and click that's what we want to add up we want to say equals in order to tell Excel that this is going to be a, a problem that we want here uh, and we want it to to do the calculation and then we're going to say that cell which they'll put down as B4 and then the plus sign that cell and that's what we want so then I'm going to select tab and obviously if anything goes wrong, you've got the old undo button up here and you can just delete the cell. So go ahead and just delete it and then up to plus up one tab. Now I'm going to do that for this cell over here. This is the new thing that happened. And I'm going to do this again. I'm going to say equals that zero because it was zero in our prior balance plus the 20, which means of course that we're bringing down that 20. Here's the 20,000. Now if I was to leave it there, Note that uh, we're not in balance here because obviously uh, this is the balance column and we're only taking into account uh, what happened in these two accounts and not the fact that this 200,000 happened in the, in the prior transaction. So to bring this back in balance, we need to bring this 200,000 down doing the same calculation equals the prior balance in L4 plus what happened this time nothing happened this time for the capital but there's that 200,000 so now we're in balance meaning uh, the total assets equal the total liabilities plus equity so you want to you know check that every time of course we could highlight it this way and check there's total assets 220,000 here is the liabilities plus equity 220 so now I'm just gonna I'm gonna do the the same thing to the rest just to practice this uh, bringing the zeros down. But I want to say this column the prior balance plus this column tab. So that's gonna be the routine. I'm in cell D6. So in cell D6 I'm gonna say equals up two plus up one. So D4 plus D5 tab tab. I'm in cell F6. I'm gonna say equals up two plus up one tab tab. We're now in cell H6. I'm gonna say equals up two plus up one, tab, tab. We're now in cell J6. We're gonna say equals up two plus up one, tab, 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 all the way over to P6. We're gonna say equals up two plus up one, tab, tab, and in R6 equals up two plus up one. Now, obviously that's a bit redundant to do all that just to bring the zeros down. But it's a good practice that we're trying to emphasize the fact that, of course, we're talking about the prior balance plus what happened this time. All right, now we're going to be on C. And again, remember that all this stuff up here looks kind of complicated, but we don't need any of it at this time when calculating the part C. We just need this balance. And then we're going to enter this data, and that's going to then be added together to give us the balance after C has been done. So let's take a look at C where it says, paid cash to employees 1200 question then is is cash affected and of course it is cash is affected with all these transactions and cash is going up or down in this case we're saying we paid the employees now remember whenever we look at these problems we are not the employee we may have more uh, experience being the employee and getting paid by a uh, business but in this case we are the business and therefore cash is going down for the business and of course up for the employees. So it's going down for the business. So I'm gonna put a negative one, two, zero, zero. And then when we select enter, the Excel is gonna represent that negative with brackets. And that's just the format of Excel. And it's pretty common to use brackets because they're generally easier to see 
So that's, that's the format that Excel has been put into in this problem. Then we just need to know what the other side of this transaction. And if we pay employees, that's gonna be something that we expended in order to help us generate revenue in the same time period. That's the definition of an expense under the matching principle. Expenses are part of the income statement account and the whole income statement accounts, revenue and expenses are part of equity. So over here, way over here, we've got the expenses. Here's the expense. Now, it it's, can be confusing to know whether the expense is going to bring equity up or down. We know that this side went down, this side of the equal sign. Therefore, if this is the other account, then it must be going down. So I'm going to put a negative 1200. Zero, zero. It's going down. Now, we, we want to be able to double check that, however. Does, if we didn't know this side was going down, how would we know this was going down, bringing equity down? Well, expenses are only go one way as well, meaning we only pay the employees, they never pay us. Now, it, expenses are a little confusing when we consider them in relation to the accounting equation because later we're going to we're going to give the idea that expenses only go up and they do. Obviously, when we talk about expenses, they're only going to go up. We don't say that expenses are going negative. We we say that expenses increase and as they increase, they decrease net income calculated as revenue minus expenses. But when we consider the expenses in terms of the equity section, we know that if they're bringing net income down, therefore the expenses are gonna bring the equity portion down. So later on, you're gonna have to just keep that in mind. Expenses go up, but they bring total equity down because they're bringing net income down, net income calculated as revenue minus expenses. So that's going to be our transaction and of course this transaction is now in balance total assets equal liabilities plus equity i'm going to then bring down the rest of the balances here so we are now in cell d7 i'm just going to put zero tab tab zero tab tab zero tab tab zero tab tab again you don't have to do this you can leave them blank but if you work some book problems they'll require the zeros so it's it's kind of um useful to do and it's good practice to just work through the tabs because it, it's really good practice to do that so i'm going to say zero tab tab zero tab 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 zero and enter all right so now we're going to bring these balances down so we've got the prior balance here that's what happened before this transaction that's where we were at we don't need to worry about any of this stuff up here we're going to take this prior balance plus what happened in part c and that will give us our new total so I'm going to go back over here. Now, if I was to do this in a calculator, with a calculator, I should say, then we should have 220,000 minus 1,002. Now, if we're working Excel, however, we need to be mindful of whether or not this number is a negative number or not. So this number we represented as a negative number. Therefore, what we need to do is this plus this cell. If I sum these two up, we get the 218.8, meaning it subtracted it. Why? Because this is a negative number. So when we do the calculation, we can do this a few different ways. We could, we could just type in the number and do it in a calculator, but we want to use Excel. So we could say it equals this cell plus, I'm going to go up one, that cell. And, and so it's, B, it's cell B6 plus B7. We'll do the subtraction problem, 120,000 minus 1,200. However, it would be better for us to use the um, sum function. So what we're going to do is, is learn this is the most useful function by far in uh, Excel. And so it's best just to pick it up. You can do it a few different ways. You can go to the home tab and use this auto sum function. But it's best just to type, just to learn to type it in there. Uh, there's some other shortcuts, but the sum function is going to be equals sum. And then there's the sum function. So I'm going to double click on it. And then I'm going to highlight these two cells. So there's, there's our function. We could close it up. We don't really have to because Excel will put that parentheses in when we select enter. So just recall, this looks like a complicated formula, but note that all you have to do is start typing equals an S, S-U, and it'll, it'll, you'll see the sum function pop up and then just highlight this cell. What this function means is that we're going to sum the cells from B6 to B7, meaning the cells within that, that highlighted group. This is cell B6 to B7. So that's going to be that. I'm going to do that a few more times in these other transactions. So we'll do that. The new thing that happened was over here in cell P8. 
So I'm going to do the same thing, equals sum, and then I'm going to double click that sum function and highlight the zero and the 1200 because that's the prior balance plus what we did this time, giving us the 1200. So note that those are the two transactions that happened in uh, part C, but we're not in balance, of course, because we need to take into account in the balance column all the other stuff that happened before C happened. We need to bring down all the rest of the balances. So I'm going to start that here because we got to bring that 200 down. So I'm in cell L8, same sum function, equals SUM, double click on the sum, highlight the 200 and the zero, and enter. And we're going to do the same thing over here in N8, sum, same sum function, equals SUM, brackets, we're going to highlight the 20,000 and the zero, and enter. So there we have that. So that should bring us in balance, I believe. So we're back in balance and we can do, we can double check that this way. We can say all these, just highlight them and Excel will calculate it down here, down here as 218,800. And then we can highlight all of these on the other side of the equal sign. And we see that we have 218,800. Be mindful, however, that this is being subtracted because this is a negative number. So when I highlight this, it's saying 200,000 plus 20 minus the negative number gives us the 218,800. Next, I'm going to sum these up just to finish the sum function, although they are zero. So just to practice the sum function, I'm going to say SUM. And this time I'm going to, I'm going to finish the function just with the keyboard. I'm going to hit Shift 9. That's, that's going to be the bracket key. And then I'm going to hit the up arrow one time, hold down Shift, and the up arrow again. So that might be a bit complicated. You could you could just use the mouse, but I'm gonna do this a couple more times just to practice that. Then I'm gonna select tab, tab, equals, so I'm gonna type SUM, shift nine for the bracket, up arrow one time, and then hold down shift, and then the up arrow again. And that'll that'll do the whole thing. If it gets messed up, just delete it and, <laughs> and hit the undo button and then do it again. So I'm gonna say tab, tab, equals SUM, Hold down shift nine for the brackets, the up arrow one time, hold down shift so it'll it'll make the block. And then there you go, and then tab, tab, and then equals SUM, shift nine, up one arrow, hold down shift, up arrow again, and tab, 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 tab. One more time, utilities in cell R8 equals SUM. Hold down shift nine, up arrow one time, hold down shift, up arrow again, and enter. So there we have that. All right, and again, you could just put the zeros in there um, manually, or you or you could uh, you could use that function. But it's good practice to practice the sum function. Next item, we're saying D received cash for work that will be done uh, in the future. That should be we're going to do work in the future, and we already got the cash. So I'm going to say cash is is cash affected that being the first question for transaction D and of course it is we got cash received cash so I'm going to say 30,000 for the cash and then the question is what's the other side of this transaction why did people pay us cash people pay us because we're going to do work of course but the key point here is that we are going to do work and have not yet done work at this point in time therefore we can't increase the revenue account as we would like to do, even though we got the cash under an accrual system because we, we recognize revenue under the revenue recognition principle when it is earned and it has not yet been earned, although it has been received. We need to earn it in the future through some type of service, whatever it is we do as the company. Therefore, the other side will go to unearned revenue. Unearned revenue. Notice it's a liability account representing the fact that we owe something in the future not the thirty thousand dollars but the thirty thousand worth of work and if we don't do the work then we owe the thirty thousand dollars but hopefully we're going to do the work and we're going to keep the thirty thousand dollars so we're going to increase this by thirty thousand and again we know that two different ways if we do cash first i know that this side went up and that side of the equal sign went up therefore this side of the equal sign must go up and if that's the account affected it must go up also, I can double check that it should be going up if I had not known that cash went up. 
then is it correct that unearned revenue would go up? Well, yeah, it's a liability account. We owe something in the future. Therefore, it's going to be increased. So we're going to have to increase it. All right, that's the transaction. And we can see that our transaction is in balance here. Total assets equaling total liabilities plus owner's equity. Now I'm just going to bring down the rest of the zeros. I'm going to say I'm in cell D9, 0, tab, tab, F9, 0, tab, tab, cell H9, 0, tab, 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 cell uh, 9, uh, L9, 0, tab, tab, cell N9, 0, tab, tab, cell P9, 0, tab, tab, and cell R9, 0, and enter. Next, we're going to bring down the balances now. So remember, we're talking about this is the previous balance. Everything above that, not worried about at all at this point in time. We are only worried about this line, previous balance, plus transaction that we have just done, this transaction here. And we need to sum those up as we did last time. So I'm going to go ahead and sum these up. I'm going to scroll down just a little bit so we can see that. And I'm going to say equals SUM. And I'm going to double click on the sum function and then highlight these two again. So the sum B8 colon B9 and enter. Then we're gonna, I'm gonna scroll over to the new transaction that happened over here in J10 equals SUM, double click, highlight those two cells and sum of J8 colon J9 and enter. So that's our new transactions and note that we are not of course in balance at this point in time we need to bring down the rest of the balances. So I'm gonna bring down these balances. I'm in uh, L10 equals SUM. And I'm gonna double click the sum function, highlight the 200 and the zero. Gonna do the same for N10 equals SUM. Gonna highlight the 20 and the zero. Do the same for cell P10 equals SUM. Double click the sum function, highlight the 1002 and the zero that's all the cells with the data that should bring us in balance as it does so total assets equal total liabilities plus equity net income is at 18,300 calculated as revenue here scroll up a little bit revenue minus the expenses that gives us the 18,800 and we can also double check that we are in balance by just highlighting with excel this side of the equal sign adding up to 248,800 and then this side of the equal sign adding up to 248,800. Then we can bring down the, the rest of the zeros. I'm going to do the sum function again just to practice. I'm going to, high, I'm going to add up this zero and this zero using the sum function. So we're going to say equals SUM. I'm going to use just the keyboard this time, bracket nine, up one, hold down shift, up two, tab, tab. We're in cell F10 equals SUM, shift nine, up arrow one time, hold down shift, up arrow again, tab, tab. We're in cell H10, equals SUM, shift nine, up arrow one time, hold down shift, up arrow again, tab, 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 all the way to the end. We are in cell R10, equals SUM, hold down shift nine, up arrow one time, hold down shift, up arrow again, and enter. All right, so that's gonna be part D. We are now on part E, which says paid cash for utilities, 1,500. So we paid cash for utilities. First question, as always, is cash affected? We're gonna say, yes, cash is affected. It's going up, We, I mean, it's going down. We paid cash for utilities. So in cell B10 or B11, uh, we're going to have a negative 1,500. So I'm going to say negative one. Whoop, what happened? Negative 1,500. Zero, zero. And of course, we can see the negative there, but I'm not going to put brackets around it or I'm not going to put the, uh, the comma. I'm just going to select enter and it will then format with brackets. Excel seeing those brackets as a negative number. Now we paid that 1,500 for utilities. So what's the other side of the transaction? Utilities, we typically would think is something that we expended in order to help us generate revenue. And that's the definition of an expense. That's the matching principle. Expenses are part of the income statement and the entire income statement is part of the equity section. 
So way over here, we've got the expenses. That's gonna be our last column. I'm gonna scroll down, last column. I'm gonna be over here in R11. Question then is, will the expenses be going up or down? One way to answer that is that this side of the equal sign went down. Therefore, this side of the equal sign must be going down. Then we double check our work by being able to say, well, utilities expense, should it be going down if I had not known what was going on with cash? Utilities expense will bring down equity because it's bringing down revenue. So any, I mean, it's bringing down net income. So anytime net income goes down, that will also bring down equity. How is net income going down? Because revenue minus expenses will bring down net income. So this, this negative number represents the fact that the expenses are decreasing the equity section. But keep in mind that expenses will generally only go up. We don't say expenses go down, although expenses decrease the equity section. So keep that in mind as we go. The, the negative number represents that equity is going down by the expense. But later on, we're going to be talking about expenses always going in one direction, going up and net income being calculated as revenue minus expenses. So that should put us in balance. So in this transaction, we are in balance and net income is affected. It's going down by the 1,500 utility. I'm gonna go ahead and put in the zeros to the rest of the transactions. I'm gonna say I'm in cell D11, zero, tab, tab, F11, zero, tab, tab, H11, zero, tab, tab, J11, zero, tab, tab, L11, zero, tab, tab, N11, zero, tab, tab, P11, zero, tab, tab, and enter. Now we're gonna bring down the balance. So remember what we are doing is looking at the prior balance here, not concerned with anything above that prior balance, but only concerned with those transaction, that transaction below that balance. We're gonna sum up these as we go all the way across, starting with cell B12. We're gonna say equals SUM, Double click the sum function, highlight the two cells, and we have uh, sum enter. Now note that, of course, this is a negative number. So if we were to do this in a calculator, we'd say 248,800 minus 1,500. But when we add them, we need to add them here, meaning Excel sees this as summing or adding this positive number plus a negative, plus a negative will result in a subtraction problem, which is what we want. So then we're gonna go over here. This is the new thing that happened in R12. I'm gonna sum these up equals SUM. Double click the sum, highlight the cells and enter. And there we have that. It's gonna be a negative number. Those are the new things that happened, but of course we are not in balance because we need to bring down the rest of the balances that were in uh, this cell column or row 10. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the, the items with the numbers first. Over here in J12, I'm gonna bring down that 30, the 200, the 20, but I'm gonna sum up the 30 and the zero. This way equals the SUM. Double click the sum, highlight the prior balance and the current activity, enter. Gonna do the same for L12 equals SUM. Double click the sum function, highlighting the prior balance plus the activity and enter. In cell N12 equals SUM, double click, highlighting the prior balance plus the activity, and enter. In cell P12 equals SUM, double click the sum function, highlight the prior activity plus prior balance plus the current activity, and enter. Next, I'm gonna do the same thing, but just for the zero balances only using the keyboard, we're gonna say equals SUM, Shift nine, brackets, up arrow one time, hold down shift, up arrow, tab, tab. I'm in cell F12 equals SUM, shift nine, up arrow one time, hold down shift, up arrow, and tab, tab. In cell F12, H12 equals SUM, shift nine, up arrow one time, hold down shift, up arrow again, and enter. So now we just brought down the rest of those zeros. We can see that we are in balance if we scroll over here, total assets equaling total liabilities plus equity, net income now being calculated at 17,300, which is revenue. This is the revenue account if we scroll back up. <laughs> revenue minus the expenses, 17,300. 
If we want to verify that we are in balance as well, we can we can highlight the assets. Assets are these items here, 247.3, and we can highlight the liabilities and equity here, 247.3. Last transaction, transaction F, paid cash for supplies, $700. First question, is cash affected? This is the cash count. I know we can't see it up there, but this is the cash count as we've seen all the way through here. And cash is affected, we're paying cash and therefore cash is gonna go down. So I'm gonna say negative 700. When we select enter, we know that the cell will then format with those brackets as like so. And we paid the 700 for supplies. So supplies, you might be thinking that supplies is something that we consumed in order to help generate revenue and therefore should be an expense. And it will be expensed at some point, but note that when we purchase the supplies, we have not yet consumed the supplies. We're gonna consume them in the future in order to help us generate revenue in the future at some point. That's the definition of an asset. So this is kind of like our, our introduction to inventory, meaning we're going to track the supplies in a similar way that we would track inventory, putting all the supplies into an asset account, then counting the supplies at the end of the time period, and then writing down the supplies asset account and recording the related expense account as the supplies are consumed. So in this case, it's going to be an asset. So this, this one's kind of tricky in that we know that this went down over here, and this is on the same side of the equal sign, so it must then be going up. So note that when you work with the accounting equation, it is not the case that we have to have one account in, in one of each transaction, uh, as is often thought when we first start working with this accounting equation, meaning it's very possible to have two accounts that are both assets, resulting in no net effect on the accounting equation, meaning no net assets didn't go up or down, liabilities didn't go up or down, or equity didn't go up or down what did happen one asset account went up and or this asset account went up and one asset account went down so no activity or no result in total assets uh, one's going up one's going down however all right so then we're going to bring down the balances so i'm in b14 i'm going to say equals sum and double click the sum function highlight the 247.3 and the 7 and of course this is a subtraction problem because we we are taking the positive number plus that negative number and excel sees the sum function as subtracting due to it being a negative number then in f14 equals sum double click the sum function highlight the 0 and the 700 and enter those are the two new transactions, but of course we are not in balance due to the fact that we haven't brought down all the other balances that were involved from the prior transactions, which we will now do. So I'm going to go over here to the, to the transactions that have uh, data in them. First starting with uh, th this transaction over here. Actually I should have gone back and put in the zeros too. So let's go, let's go up here and put in all the zeros. So on D13 I'm going to say zero. Tab, 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 zero, 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 tab, tab, and zero. Okay, so, and, and again, you could leave those without the zeros, it won't hurt, but uh, it's nice to put the zeros in there, and some problems will require it, depending on the database program you are using if you're working at a, at a campus or something and working through these problems. All right, then we're going to sum these up. I'm going to be uh, summing up these first. I'm in cell J14 equals SUM. Double click the sum function, highlight the 30 and the 0, and I'm going to select tab this time. Tab, tab. We are in L14 equals SUM, and double click the sum function, highlight the 200 and the 0. Tab, tab. We are now in cell N14 equals the sum, S-U-M, double click sum function, highlight the 20 and the 0, tab, tab. In cell P14 equals S-U-M, double click the sum function, highlight the 1002 and the 0, tab, tab. We are now in R14 equals S-U-M, double click the sum function, highlight the 15 and the 0 and enter. Finally, I'm just going to bring down the last couple zero calculations using the sum function, however, only using the keyboard, equals SUM, shift 9, up arrow one time, 
hold down shift, up arrow a second time, and tab, 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 tab. We're in cell H14 equals SUM shift F, uh, shift, shift <laughs> nine, up arrow one time, hold down shift, up arrow again, and enter. And finally, we should be hopefully in balance. So if we scroll back over here, we are in balance here. We see that net income now still remaining at 17,300, calculated as revenue minus expenses, scrolling back down, revenue minus expenses, 173. And we can double check that the entire thing is in balance using Excel by just highlighting B14 to H F14 which is 247,300, then highlighting the other side of the equal sign, the liabilities in H14 through R14, giving us the 247,300. Therefore, we are in balance. Remember that when we highlight these, it's really zero plus 30 plus 200 plus 20 minus 1,002 minus 1,500. That's what Excel is calculating due to the format here being negative numbers in P14 and cell R14.